In Genesis 1, we hear the story of creation. It's a story about how God brought all things into being. And in the midst of that story, God brings us into being, and God makes us unique. Today, I want to talk about how God wants us to continue to preserve our uniqueness and care for ourselves as God has created us. Recently, I heard Wayne Cadero, a pastor in Hawaii, talk about some ways that he provides self-care for himself. And I'd like to share a couple of those things with you today. First of all, he talks about identifying what fills you and what depletes you. It's one of the things that we all experience in life. There are things that fill us up, that just bring joy to our life, uh, bring happiness, bring a sense of, of vigor and vitality. When I think about the things that fill me in life, uh, what comes to my mind are athletics, family, travel, photography. When I'm doing any of these things, it, it just raises my spirits, it lifts my soul, it just fills me. Now there are also some things in my life that deplete me. Uh, long days, lots of details, uh, many other th aspects that come with just living my life and things that are absolutely necessary, but when I do too much of them uh, together or on an ongoing basis, it just totally drains me and depletes me. It particularly robs me of doing the things that I really enjoy doing in life, like photography or being with my family or traveling or, or participating in athletics. And so one of the things I have to always have to look at, and I encourage all people to look at, is what is it that's depleting us, and also are we allowing ourselves to be filled? Are we allowing the things in our life that just bring us joy and, and, and fullness to occur in our life each and every day? The second thing is that we need to lead out of Sabbath. I think about this. Most of us often uh, reflect on Sabbath as something that comes out at the end of our work. It comes at the end of the things we do. Well, I really would like to think about it in a new way. Jesus demonstrated this for us. As a matter of fact, when He began His ministry, He went to the wilderness. He spent 40 days and 40 nights there in Sabbath time, spending that with God, reflecting on God, what God wanted him to do. And then he began his ministry. You see, he led out of rest. He led out of Sabbath. I want to encourage all spiritual leaders to first set Sabbath. When in this week am I going to experience Sabbath? When in this month am I going to experience Sabbath? When in this year am I going to experience Sabbath? Set our Sabbath at the beginning and then let the rest of the calendar, let the rest of our activity flow out of that Sabbath. I invite you to try that because I believe it's a more balanced way of living into our ministry. And thirdly, I want all of us to experience God's healing. And one of the ways that I think we can experience healing is to be in exercise. First, it's physical exercise, that we're active and, and doing things each and every day with our bodies that, that, that allow us to physically exercise, to walk, to run, to, to lift weights, uh, to participate in various activities but things that we can do to help our body to exercise. I try to run each morning. I try to get out and, and just exercise my body. It, it just helps my body to be uh, more in balance. Now there's another kind of exercise that's also very important, and that's our spiritual exercises. And I encourage and invite every spiritual leader to be exercising spiritually. This means daily prayer, spending time with God in prayer. It's also about daily Bible reading and reading our Bibles each and every day. And thirdly, it's about meditating, just taking time in silence, reflecting on a question, reflecting on a piece of scripture, reflecting on an activity in our life or something that has happened, and just allowing God to speak to us. Three things. Identify what fills you and depletes you. Make sure 
that in your life you continue to fill up your soul. Secondly, leading out a Sabbath. And thirdly, sharing an exercise. Now I know this is hard. We who are spiritual leaders uh, feel compelled and called by God to give every ounce that we have into ministry. But God wants us to live a balanced life. And we need to take the step for that to happen. So I invite each of you to continue to hold each other accountable in your groups for how you're living this balanced life, how you're providing care for yourself that you can care for others, and taking the steps necessary to live that balanced life. Once, there was a swiftly flowing river. And standing on the banks of that river was a giant old oak tree that had been there long enough to put branches high into the sky, as well as roots deep into the riverbank. And nestled among those gnarled old roots was a rather substantial puddle. And living in the midst of that puddle was a school of puddlefish. Now life for the puddlefish was pretty basic. I mean, they didn't have room to do much more than to swim in circles and to hunt for water bugs. Life was pretty basic for the puddlefish. And it never changed, until one day that is. Now the day had started like any other day for the puddlefish. They found themselves swimming in circles and hunting for water bugs when all of a sudden, splash, oh, hey, watch yourself, look out. There, in the midst of their puddle, was the most beautifully colored sparkling fish that any of the puddlefish had ever seen. Oh, the blues, the reds, the golds, he was amazing. But what was most astonishing about this particular fish in this particular puddle was the fact that this fish was smiling. Well, all of the puddlefish were in one huddled mass over in a corner of the puddle. But finally, one of them got up enough nerve to ask, where do you come from? And the sparkling fish broke into an enormous grin as he replied, who, me? Well, I come from the sea. The sea, did he say the sea? What's the sea? The sparkling fish couldn't believe his ears. You mean to tell me no one has ever told you about the sea? Well, the sea, the sea is what fish are made for. How can I begin to get you to understand the importance of the sea? Okay, well, for starters, life in the sea is not lived in the shade of an old tree, for the sun arches over the waves in crimson and gold. And life in the sea isn't lived in cramped quarters like this tiny puddle, for the sea is endless, allowing all of the sea creatures to dance with the tide. Oh, and speaking of those sea creatures, well, they're not like anything you have ever seen before or could even begin to imagine. Yes, the sea is, is endless, it's, it's sparkling clear. The sea is what fish are made for. A water bug skirted across the surface of the, the puddle, but none of the puddlefish moved. Finally, one pale gray fish spoke up and said, well, how do we get to the sea? And if it's possible, that grin on the sparkling fish grew even broader as he pointed to the tree root that separated the puddle from the river. And he said, it is a simple matter. You jump. <laughs> you jump from this puddle into the river and you trust that the current will take you to the sea. That's it. 
That's it? <laughs> the cuttlefish had never heard anything so preposterous before in their lives. They, they, they were stunned. And suddenly one of them broke rank and, and swam towards the sparkling fish. He had a look of, of hard determination on his face. You see, he <coughs> was a realist fish. Yes, well, it's all very nice to talk about this sea business, but if you ask me, we've got to face reality. And what is reality? Hmm? Well, obviously, reality is swimming in circles and hunting for water bugs. I mean, I, 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 I'm sure that you concocted this whole sea story due to some trauma you experienced when you were a young guppy. Well, I'm sorry you had to go through that, but come on, life is tough and it takes a real fish to face the facts. <laughs> this just made the sparkling fish laugh. And he said, no, you don't understand. You see, I've been to the sea. I've actually seen it with my own two eyes. Oh, and it is far more wonderful than anything. <laughs> but before he could finish, the realist fish swam away. Next, there swam forward a small fish with a nervous twitch in her tail. You see, she was a scared fish. You mean you want us to, 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 to jump? To, to jump into that river over there? Yes. You see, for any fish who wants to get to the sea, the way lies through that river. But, but, but have, 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 have you seen that, that river? It's, it's, it's sw swift and, and, and deep and, and wide. I, I, I'm just, just, a, just a small fish. If, if, if I were to jump, then, 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 then I, 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 I might lose control. No, 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 I, 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 I can't do that. I, you, you simply can't ask, ask us to, 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 to do that. Trust me. And trust that the current will take you someplace good. Someplace beyond your... No. But before he could finish, again, the fish swam away. Finally, there swam forward a very distinguished and learned looking fish. He had been in this particular school of fish longer than any of the others. He slowly swam to the center of the puddle, set down a small shellfish podium, and reached into his vest pocket for his notes. <coughs> you see, he was a theologian fish. <coughs> My dear friends, our distinguished visitor has brought forth views which certainly warrant our consideration. <laughs> but, my fine finned friend, the fish which so gracefully inhabit this humble puddle have also brought forth views which warrant our consideration as well. By all means, let us be reasonable. Now, I'm, I'm sure that we can come to some sort of agreement here. Yes, yes, that's it. Why don't we form a discussion group? Yes, why we could meet on, uh, um, on Tuesday nights at 7.30. And I'm sure that several of the puddlefish would be more than happy to bring coffee and donuts. Yes, yes. No, talking is important, yes, but in the end, it's a very simple matter. You jump. You jump from this puddle into the river, and you trust that the current will take you to the sea. Just then, they all heard the sounds of a sparrow singing in the branches overhead. And the sparkling fish looked up out of the puddle, and he said, oh, besides, don't you see? Summer is coming. Summer is coming. Did he say summer's coming? What difference does that make if summer's coming? Yes. Summer is coming. You see, the spring rains filled this puddle to overflowing. But soon, the heat and the sun of summer, well, they're going to dry it up. I mean, no puddle lasts forever. Now at this, the puddlefish were, were stunned. They were, they were speechless. 
They didn't know what to say to that. And suddenly, the realist fish, he swam forward again. And this time, he had a look of contempt on his face as he spat out the words. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that just like you religious fish? When you don't get people to honestly believe you, you try to scare them into believing you. Yeah, you're just another one of those end-of-the-puddle fanatics. And he swam off in disgust. But suddenly, the blues and the reds and the golds of the sparkling fish, they warmed to an intense glow. And he closed his eyes, and he tried one final time. It's a simple matter. You jump. You jump from this puddle into the river, and you trust that the current will take you to the sea. Now, who will follow me? Well, for many long moments, none of the puddlefish moved. But then, a few of them did swim forward, and they joined the sparkling fish on either side. And then together, they jumped into the river and were swiftly carried away. For a long time, the remaining puddlefish stayed exactly where they were. But then, eventually, one by one, they once again began to swim in circles and to hunt for water bugs. Thank you for coming. I'm glad you're participating in the discipler groups. I think this is a great opportunity for us to continue to support one another and encourage one another. I recognize that ministry is hard, that there are many challenges we face each and every day and struggles we wrestle with each and every day. And so I want to continue to encourage you to live into the Word. Genesis talks about Sabbath and the importance of it. The Ten Commandments tell us to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And Jesus set a model for us of plenty of rest and good Sabbath. In the midst of your ministry, in the midst of your challenges, and in the midst of the difficulties, I want to encourage you to use the gift God has given you, Sabbath rest. Let us together support each other as we continue in ministry.